Here is a wise virgin from among the number of the prudent who went forth with lighted lamp to meet Christ. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our morning live streaming mass. We're happy to have you with us today. The church today remembers the, the, uh, the uh, celebrates the memory of St. Catherine of Siena. She was a 14th century mystic, a third order Dominican, who was, was very influential in the church of her time. In fact, she is credited alone with having the, the papacy, which at that time was in Avignon, France, move back to Rome. And the story goes that she threatened the Pope who was living in Avignon that if he didn't go back to Rome within a year, he would be dead. And she was known to be a mystic at that time, so they took her seriously. And within a year, he returned the papacy to Rome. But she wrote a, a book called The Dialogues, which really her, her dialogues with the Lord uh, that uh, she had over a series of years. She was also gifted with a stigmata later in life. So we honor this very important woman in the church, a doctor of the church in our liturgy today. Let us begin our Eucharist by first acknowledging our own sinfulness as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are the way. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who set St. Catherine of Siena on fire with divine love, in her contemplation of the Lord's passion and her service of your church. Grant through her intercession that your people participating in the mystery of Christ may ever exult in the revelation of his glory, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. There broke out a severe persecution of the church in Jerusalem, and all were scattered throughout the countryside of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Devout men buried Stephen and made a loud lament over him. Saul, meanwhile, was trying to destroy the church entering house after house and dragging out men and women, he handed them over for imprisonment. Now those who had been scattered went about preaching the word. Thus, Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed Christ to them. With one accord, the crowds paid attention to what was said by Philip when he, they heard it and saw the signs that he was doing. For unclean spirits, crying out in a loud voice, came out of many possessed people, and many paralyzed and crippled people were cured. There was great joy in that city. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to be to God. God. Sponsorio, let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Shout joyfully to God, all the earth. Sing praise to the glory of his name. Proclaim his glorious praise. Say to God, how tremendous are your deeds. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all of the earth worship and praise, sing praise to him. Sing praise to your name. Come and see the works of God, his tremendous deeds among the children of Adam. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. 
He has changed the sea into dry land. Through the river they passed on foot. Therefore, let us rejoice in him. He rules by his might forever. Let all, Let all the earth, earth cry out, out to God, God with joy. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger and whoever believes in me will never thirst. But I told you that although you have seen me, you do not believe. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and I will not reject anyone who comes to me, because I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. And this is the will of the one who sent me, that I should not lose anything of what he gave me, but that I should raise it up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life, and I shall raise him on the last day. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Today's short five verse passage from the gospel, Jesus gives us three promises that can change our lives. If we trust in Jesus and follow him, we will never be separated from him. The first promise, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. The promise of Jesus goes beyond physical hunger and beyond physical existence. As the bread of life, Jesus comes to us as a gift from the Father, a gift for us. The Father who sustains us in this life through the Holy Spirit will also give us eternal life. And as the bread of life, Jesus gives us his entire self, not only his body and blood in the Eucharist, but also his body and blood on the cross. St. Catherine of Siena, whose memory we celebrate today, wrote, Abandon yourself to him. He opened up his whole self by creating a bath within his open side after he died to show us his love. Do you want to live in security? Then hide yourself within his side and see that you are never found outside this opened heart. Though once you enter, you will discover such joy and sweetness that you will never want to leave. This is echoed in the beautiful prayer called the Anima Christi. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, fill me with joy. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O oh, good Jesus, hear me. Hide me within your wounds and never let me be separated from you. It's a beautiful image of being hidden in the wounds of Jesus, being that close to his sacred heart. And united with the heart of Jesus, we will never hunger or thirst. That's the promise. In the second promise, Jesus assures us of his eternal friendship. I will never reject anyone who comes to me. Now what's interesting in this, in, this, uh, in this verse here is one word, the word reject. It's a Greek word. The Greek word is ekbalo. Ekbalo means reject. And it literally means to throw out, to throw something out. And what is interesting is that same exact word appears in the Old Testament, in the book of Genesis, 
with God throwing out Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden. And again, the same Greek work is used in the Greek Old Testament, the Septuagint, ekbalo. Jesus will not do what, what was done to them. He has given his life for us. And what was lost to Adam and Eve by their disobedience will be restored by the obedience of Jesus. The Lord said, I came down from heaven not to do my will, but the will of the one who sent me. Jesus will be obedient to the Father, unlike Adam and Eve. This is why he will never reject anyone who comes to him. And then the third promise, it gives us hope for eternal life. I shall not lose anything of what the Father gave me, but that I shall raise it on the last day. Jesus will never drive away those given to him by the Father. The Father's will is for the salvation of all of humanity. He wants all of us to be saved. And the work of salvation includes sharing in the new life that has been won for us by the death and resurrection of Jesus. Eating the bread of life, we participate in the saving mystery of Jesus. And we do that also by the crosses we carry in our own lives. We must strive to remain faithful to God's will as the first disciples did, as we heard in our first reading today from the Acts of the Apostles. We read how they cast out demons and how they healed those who were paralyzed. Now you might ask, well, how can I do that? I can't cast out demons. I can't heal the paralyzed. But you see, we can in this way. We can help dispel the demons of fear and hopelessness that hold people bound, especially during this COVID-19 pandemic. We can help those who are overwhelmed and emotionally paralyzed by the, uh, their uncertain economic or employment future. By expressing courage and hope in our lives, we can help to spare the fear that others have in their lives. To embrace Jesus as the bread of life reveals that we have placed ourselves in the shelter of his wounded side, united with his sacred heart. With trust in the Lord Jesus, we place our prayers before him. We pray for the church, for our church leaders, that they will continue to guide us during this difficult time. With faith, hope, and love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our government leaders, <laughs> that as they try to, to navigate this virus, and opening up uh, cities and the economy again, that they will be guided by the wisdom of the Holy Spirit and, and keep uppermost in their minds serving the people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are on the front lines of fighting this virus, our nurses, our doctors, our health care workers, those who, who work in the staffs in hospitals, uh, first responders, that the Lord will keep them safe. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick, those who are inflicted with this virus and those who are sick in other ways, that the Lord will comfort them and heal them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the intentions of Michael Newhart, for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the repose of the souls of Regine Mason and Florence Hayes, who is the mother of Brian Hayes, who passed away this week, that the Lord will welcome them into his kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for the prayers in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us gather all of our prayers and ask for Mary's intercession 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the saving sacrifice we <laughs> offer in commemoration of St. Catherine, so that instructed by her teaching, we may give ever more fervent thanks to you, the one true God. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to loud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, 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 holy Lord God, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. And giving you thanks, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving you thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, 
giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, John, his auxiliary, the clergy, religious, and all your people. Remember your servant, Florence Hayes, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Catherine of Siena, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we, we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, temptation but, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. On you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, Qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let's pray together the prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, like the disciples on the road to Emmaus, I too have found myself confused by God's ways or with hope disappointed. Come and walk with me. Sit at my table. Show me the path of life. I love you and desire to follow you ever more closely. I want to receive you into my soul. You have indeed been made known to me in the breaking of the bread. I long to recognize you again in the bread of life and receive you again at the table of the Eucharist, where I believe you are truly present in the most holy sacrament. I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, but Jesus comes spiritually into my heart, where I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Never let me be separated from you, but help me to serve you all my days. Keep me close in your sacred heart. Amen. Let us pray. May the heavenly table at which we have been fed, O Lord, confer eternal life upon us, as even in the, this world it nourished the life of St. Catherine. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We thank you for joining us for Mass this morning. We're here every morning, Monday through Saturday at 8 o'clock, and then Sunday at 9 o'clock in the morning for Mass. After the Mass, the church is open. The chapel of St. Francis is open. All those this morning, they're working on the new door, uh, putting a final coat of, of stain on the, new door, on the door of the new chapel. So it may be closed in the morning to this morning. Um, also, rosary tonight at 7 o'clock. We hope you'll join us for that. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God.